NFT, non-fungible tokens. If you are someone who has no idea of what is NFT, and you'd like to know what it is, in the simplest, non-technical language, then you are in the right place. We'll push the technical definition of NFT, and why it is called non-fungible etc., towards the very end. I'm sure by the time you get there, you'll be very clear on what it is already. Let's start with the famous artwork of Vincent van Gogh. The painting named The Starry Night is one of my favorites. The original painting is kept in Museum of Modern Art, in New York City. If you visit New York, make sure you add the museum to your list of stops. Obviously, people want to know how much the original painting of the Starry Night costs. Nobody can purchase it, and there's no estimate of it made in the recent years. However, based on the sale of Van Gogh's other art pieces, it's supposed to fetch in a couple of hundred millions if it's ever sold in an auction. What? Really? A couple of hundred million dollars for that? You may say that's crazy, and I don't blame you. Luckily, it's not for sale, and you don't need to worry about coming up with that kind of money. In fact, you only need to spend far less, if you are willing to buy a replica. But of course, if you ask, what's the use of owning a replica? You'd be right. Most paintings are highly valued only for the original piece but not the replicas. The highest price paid for a replica that was ever sold was a little over $3 million for the Mona Lisa, but that's very rare amount of money for a replica. Some replicas can be bought for a few hundreds of dollars. What if Van Gogh existed in the 21st century? Do you think he would have just decided to come up with a digital version of his painting, instead of the physical one? Well, it doesn't matter, because he belongs to a period much before digitization, and we'll never know the answer. So, let's say there's a budding Van Gogh or Da Vinci of today. And he thinks he's just going to use his computer and some software and going to come up with a beautiful painting. Okay, not really a real painting on a canvas, but a digital file, like a JPEG, PNG, bitmap, or a GIF. If someone did that, they can sell it, and it's been happening for some time now. But, is there a difference between the original digital image and the copies that are downloaded by those who pay a small fee for it? Well, nothing of any real consequence, maybe, the timestamp will be different. But, the whole advantage of digital image is the ability of creating unlimited copies without losing the quality. What if, the original data image created by the artist, is given a special identity, by creating a metadata, with its attributes in the digital space, and is differentiated from the rest of the copies. Are you with me? Let me make it simpler. Let's say the artist creates an image of nature, like my other favorite artist, Bob Ross, and he names it appropriately, nature.jpg. Now, this is the first copy of this file, and let's say, there is a unique way of identifying this file, using some of the attributes, about this file itself. Then, any copy of this image will not have the same digital footprint as the very first image that the artist created. That will make the first image very special, wouldn't it? Of course. Now, you can't tell me that they are all the same. That unique, first image, represents what is known as the NFT. To be technically correct, it's not the image itself that is an NFT. But, a token that represents the digital image is known as NFT. More about tokens later. In here, the token contains the information about the image, including the unique encoding value, and is stored in a blockchain. Please take a look at our video on blockchain for better understanding of it. Wow! That's it! I hope you have traveled with me in understanding what is NFT. If not, let me give you a real example, instead of a hypothetical one. Do you remember Jack Dorsey? The guy who used to run the social networking site, Twitter. Yeah, 
the same guy. He was the first one who ever tweeted in Twitter. Of course, he's one of the founders of Twitter, and that came in handy. The very first tweet sent by Jack Dorsey was published on March 21, 2006, simply said, just setting up my Twitter. Yeah, he missed a couple of vowels too. Jack Dorsey put a digital signature to it, called as minting, and made the tweet, a digital asset, into an NFT. He then put it for auction and had a successful bid for $2.9 million. What? Just a tweet? Selling for around 3 million bucks. I'm completely with you. As a matter of fact, the tweet will continue to remain in Twitter, but the digital ownership of this tweet belongs to the one who paid about $3 million. If it sounds ridiculous, it absolutely is. Wow! You can sell something totally virtual for such a high price. I know you are thinking the person who bought the NFT, meaning the digital ownership of Dorsey's tweet, needs to have his head examined. But, it's not that easy to dismiss that. Let's look at the arguments on the other side, by those who believe in the digital or virtual stuff. You may ask the question what will the buyer do with the NFT? Well, it's like any other asset. The seller can then sell it for a higher price and pocket the profit, as long as someone is willing to pay an even higher price. Let's go back to Van Gogh's painting. Why should anyone pay millions of dollars for it? At the end of the day, it's just a painting, and many reasonably good artists can replicate it in a few days even today. So, why should Van Gogh's original painting be valued so high? Well, the value of the painting is in our mind. The millions of people, who are art lovers, and those who travel a long distance to have a gaze upon it, are the ones who set a price to it. So, if the crowd decides to value something, then the product suddenly assumes value. There's no fixed intrinsic value for any product, including the largest diamond. It's what people believe it should be worth, that decides its value. The same is true with Mickey Mantle's baseball cards, all those rare stamps, or Elvis Presley's shoes. The value is in the mind of the person who is willing to purchase it, and in those, who bid for that item, and push it to the final price, that the buyer eventually pays. So, if there are enough people who are willing to buy a tweet or a JPEG file, for millions of dollars, then that's the value of that digital product, in this case, the NFT. NFT has been a craze in 2021, and many artists sold their digital assets, for a very high amount of money. The NFT that caused the most attention, was a JPEG file, that sold for 69 million US dollars. Did I say 69 million dollars? Did you hear that right? It's a piece titled Every Days, The First 5000 Days, created by Mike Winkleman, who goes by the name, Beeple. The JPEG is a collage of all the artwork he has posted online, during a period of 5000 days. NBA has started capitalizing on NFT as well, by selling, some short, I mean, really short videos, for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, YouTube CEO has suggested, that they are looking at NFT, as a possible source of revenue. I know your opinion keeps changing about NFT, as we describe further. Well, your original skeptical view may still be true. Remember the fad on Beanie Babies of the 90s? I'm sure they are lying somewhere in the attic now. The tulip mania of the 17th century in Netherlands, lasted for a few years before it faded away. If you thought this is crazy, I'm sure you haven't heard of a lot of more crazier things, as we explore the virtual world, including, the metaverse, the digital currency or cryptocurrency, and the whole digital ecosystem surrounding it. We'll cover them in our subsequent videos. Wait wait wait. I promised you that I'll explain what does NFT stand for, and the technical definition of NFT. Do I really need to know, you may ask. Well, it depends. But my job will not be complete, until I explain to you, that as well. 
NFT stands for non-fungible token. Well, let's start with the middle term, fungible. It means replaceable. Our currencies, say a $10 bill is fungible, because that bill is replaceable with another $10 bill, or two $5 bills. The value doesn't change. The cryptocurrencies are also fungible, because one Bitcoin, can be replaced by another Bitcoin. Some may argue that a Bitcoin can be treated as non-fungible, but it's like splitting hairs, and we'll not go into that debate. But, the digital piece of art, which is the original product, and hence unique, is not replaceable. So, it's a non-fungible token, or NFT. NFT sale records and ownership are maintained in a special decentralized database, called blockchains, like Ethereum. This ensures that there will be no issue of who is the true owner of the NFT. I know you have a question in mind. Can I create my own NFT, and sell it? Of course, you can. If someone is willing to buy your NFT, you can even create a selfie, and sell it for a good price. The price depends on the secret admirer of yours, who is willing to throw the money to own your selfie. I hope you have a few of such admirers. After you create a digital image, you need to convert that image file, by encoding through a hash value, and it becomes an NFT, through a process called minting. The NFT then resides in the blockchain, like Ethereum, though the original image may still reside elsewhere. If you are the buyer of NFTs, you need cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin to buy them, on platforms like OpenSea, Rarible, etc. We'll do a separate video how to create and sell NFTs. I know you want to make money when the fad is still there. I believe it has only started and it will stay for some time before people wake up to the reality, or, we'll all move to the virtual world, and get to experience everything we have missed in our lives. Thanks for watching.